Hallelujah. All right. Okay, continuing on through First Peter. And today we're going to crack open chapter two. Amen. All right. So let's jump right in. Let me have my first reader read first keepers of first Peter 1, 22 through 25, please. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfrightened love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart, free friendly. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of Elohim, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is as green, as grass, and all the glory of man as the flowers, flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof faileth away, falleth away. But the word of the Adonai endureth forever, and this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Hallelujah. Okay, so I wanted to uh, reiterate this last part of our first keepers because. You know, um, chapter two starts with this thought. You know, it, it, it begins with this thought in mind. And, um, you know, I, I don't think this was the best separation here of like for chapters, but nevertheless, you know, this is what we had to deal with. But this thought is being carried on over into chapter two. So um, concerning being born again, you know, um, and that is we're to be born again by the word of Elohim. And we spoke about this last week, right? You know, so, you know, this is how we're to be born again. It's via the word of Elohim, even the word of the Adonai, which do endure forever. You know, so that, that stipulates and separates it from the word of man. Amen? You know, um, because you have words of man that's been passed down, you know, through religion as well. And you have to learn to separate the words of man from the words of Elohim, you know. And so, like the oral Torah, you know, that the Yahudim keep, you know, words of men, right? You know, commandments of men. You know, that is not what we want. We want the words of Elohim. The word of Elohim is by the word of Elohim by which we're born again. Amen. Amen. So hereby we learn that. We are to be born again by the word of Elohim, which endure forever. But what does, it, um, but what does it being born again look like? What does it actually look like? How can we know if we've really been born again? You know, and so this is where First Kephas or First Peter chapter two begins. Begins. It begins to speak to this. You know, verse one says, wherefore laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all speakings, all evil speakings. You know, this is how one can know if they've, they've truly been born again, even if they've put away their carnality. You know, if you've put away the malice, you know, if you put away the guile, you know, um, you know, which speaks to deceit. You know, if you put away the hypocrisies, you know, and the envies and the evil speakings, are you still speaking or talking about people? You're still speaking evil of folks? Then you're not born again. You know, are you still envying other folks what somebody else has? You know, if you're still envying what other people have, you're not born again. You know, if, if you still have deceit, you still want to want to deceive someone, want to trick somebody into doing something, you know, you're not born again. If you still have malice in your heart, you're not born again yet. And that's okay. You know, um, you know, that's, that's okay. But, you know, these are the things that we have to get to, you know, we may be on, we may be in the journey. We may, we may still be in the womb, you know, but, uh, you know, these are the things that we have to lay aside. You know, so we have to put this carnality away from us. All these things are carnal, speaks to the carnal mind. You know, now you can still be, you know, you, you can still be in the way, you know, but just if, if you are in the way, 
you know, and you have these things. You're just a babe. You're just a newborn. You know, um, as as you continue to grow, you know, all these things have to be laid, laid aside. I mean, you know, hence uh, first key was Peter two verse two continues on, you know, um, it ended with, you know, laying aside these things. And then it continues on as newborn babes, as newborn babes. What are we to do? Desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. So you're the desire the sincere milk of the word that is the true milk of the word that ye may grow thereby you know now what is the scriptural meaning of a newborn babe you know and the answer to this is found in first corinthians 3 1 through 4. let me have my next reader read first corinthians 3 1 through 4 please and i brethren could not speak unto you as unto spiritual but unto carnal even as unto babes in the sign i fed you with milk and not with me for hitherto you were not able to bear it neither yet now are you for if for ye are not carnal but whereas for whereas there is among you envy and strife and division are you not carnal and not and walk as men? For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Hallelujah. So Apostle Paul helps us to see what a newborn babe is, you know. And he says in, in 1 Corinthians 3 1, you know, that he can't, he couldn't speak to his audience, you know as unto spiritual you know he, he couldn't he couldn't do it he had to speak to him as unto carnal even as unto babes in the mashiach so thereby that teaches us that babes in mashiach are still carnal amen? amen you know so technically speaking you could be born again you know and you could not have laid aside all those things but you were just a babe you know and you know um babes aren't supposed to stay babes all their lives right you know, they're supposed to grow up. Amen. Amen. You know, but he says, you know, couldn't speak to him. He had to speak to him as if they are carnal because they're babes in the Messiah. And so he says, I have fed you with milk, not with meat. You know, why? Because you're carnal. You know, so if you are still carnal, then you know you're still a babe. And if you're still a babe, then as uh, Kepha said, says, you should desire the sincere milk of the word. Amen? Amen. You know, you need to know where you are so that you can know what to do. See, because a lot of people are just babes and, and you know, but they, they, they done gathered an appetite for meat. You know, and the meat don't do nothing but stop them up. Mm. You know, so it does more damage than good. They need milk. Not meat. They need milk that they may grow thereby. They not going to grow off of the meat. They going to get sick off the meat. They going to have a lot of complications off the meat. You know, they need the sincere milk of the word. Sincere, sincere milk, you know, meaning the true milk, yeah. you know, the pure milk. Yeah. Don't need none of that added stuff. You don't mm. need to put no chocolate in the milk. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, we just want the straight up sincere milk, just the pure milk, okay? Yeah. You know, keep man stuff up out of it. Mm. Keep all the artificial flavors and, 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 and coloring all up out of it. Amen. You know, so that we can get some growth going on. We need some growth. We need these babes to grow up in the body. You know, and so, you know, it's not, there's no shame in being a newborn babe in Messiah. You know, some people take offense at being a babe. You know, but it's a whole lot of folks haven't even been born. They haven't been born again. So don't be offended at being a newborn babe. Recognize where you are 
so that you can know how to proceed. Because if you are a babe and you continue to try to eat meat, you're not doing nothing but damaging yourself. You're hindering your growth. You're going to wind up being a midget or something. <laughs> you know, you're not going you're not going to be able to grow. You know, you need that milk that you may grow thereby. Amen. You know, let us consider second answer. Chapter 8, 10 through 12, it says, For thou hast commanded out of the parts of the body, that is to say, out of the breast, milk to be given, which is the fruit of the breast, that the thing which is fashioned may be nourished for a time, till thou disposest it to thy mercy. Thou broughtest it up with righteousness, y'all, thou broughtest it up with thy righteousness, and nurtured it in thy Torah. And reformest it with thy judgment. So hereby we learn that the milk speaks to Torah, which is the righteousness of, of the saints of Israel, of the children of Israel. You know, so we're being told that this milk, you know, is Torah. That's the sincere milk, but the so that's the milk, I should say. But the sincere milk is only the parts of the milk that came from Yah. Because there's, you know, um, there's a part of Torah that didn't come from Yah. You know, the part that came from Yah speaks to the written word of Elohim. But the part that didn't come from Yah is the oral law, which came from men, the rabbis, passed down from generation to generation. You see, you know, a lot of today's Christians, quote unquote, you know, they don't understand that the Yahudu, when they think of Torah, they think of it in two parts, the written and the oral. And they exalt the oral over the written. Right. Right. Yet, we, as followers of Yahshua, when we think of Torah, we think of the written only. When we read, when most Christians read Torah or read the law in the word, all they're thinking about is the written word of Elohim. And that's why they get so, so caught up, so twisted in their understanding, especially with Paul's writing. You know, you know so you have to understand. You know, there's two parts of Torah. There's the part that comes from Yah, and there's the part that comes from man. All right, so we have a second witness to this found in Hebrews 5, 11 through 13. It says, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of him. Watch out now. For when... Uh, for when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of Elohim, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. And so again, the first principles of the sayings of Elohim, because the oracle speaks to the sayings. Um, you know, so the first principles of the sayings of Elohim are found in Torah, thereby giving us a second witness to the law of Yahuwah Elohim being the sincere milk of the word, you know, that which came from Yah, that which was spoken or said of Elohim. You know, also take note that if you still need milk, you're still a babe. Maybe you put some of these things away, but if you still need milk, you're still a babe. You know, and that should be okay. Because some people never got born again, as I mentioned. They haven't even made it to be a babe. You know, so even if, if you become a babe, you still get to see the king. Say a lot. This concept is also found in Torah, but one must have eyes to see. 
you know, I'm gonna try to open some folks' eyes, or I'm gonna pray that y'all open some folks' eyes, you know, so that they can see it in Torah as well. It's found in Exodus 29, 27. It says, and thou shalt sanctify the breast of the wave offering, and the shoulder of the heave offering, which is waved, and which is heaved up of the ram of the consecration, even of that which is for Aaron, and of that which is for his sons. Now, within this ritual, it can be seen that the Levitical priesthood, i.e. the wife of Elohim, you know, the Levitical priesthood is a type of the wife of Elohim, you know, and um, I'm, I'm gonna have to stop mixing the, the discipleship of course with the, uh, <laughs> with, the uh, with the weekly, weekly teachings, but we here now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so uh, for those who don't know what I'm talking about, put it on the show. You know, you know. Now, within this ritual, it can be seen that the Levitical priesthood, i.e., the wife of Elohim, are those who have the breast of Elohim. And in here, we see who had the breast of Elohim, the Levitical priest, right? Hence, it should come as no surprise that it is also the Levitical priesthood to which Torah or the milk, the sincere milk, was entrusted. It just makes sense. If they the wife and they had a breast, they should also have a milk. Yeah. Right. Amen. Amen. It just makes perfect sense. You know, uh, and this is actually what Ezra was talking about when he says, For thou hast demanded out of the parts of the body, that is to say, out of the breast, milk to be given. You know, again, it was the Levites, the priests from which they were supposed to go and get the milk that it was supposed to be given. That the thing fashioned may be nourished for a time, you know, and be brought up in righteousness in this Torah. You know, so you know, I pray that you can see that it's, 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 it's a parallel. It's speaking about the same thing, you know, but suffice it to say that the sincere milk of the word is Torah. Amen. Amen. All right, first Peter 2 3. If so be ye have tasted that the Adonai is, is gracious. You know, if so be what? We got back up. Last thing that was said was that ye may grow thereby. That ye may grow thereby. You know, and then we're told, if so be. So if you've grown, if you've grown thereby, that is, if you've been drinking your milk then milk done the body good and if you've been drinking your milk and you've grown thereby then ye have tasted that the Adonai is gracious or good you know this word actually you know speaks to good and it's a quote from from Psalms 34 um, 34 7 let me have my next reader read um, to healing or Psalms 34 7 through 9 please the angel of Yahuwah encamped round about them that feared him and delivered them. O oh, taste and see that Yahuwah is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. O oh, fear Yahuwah, ye his saints, for there is no one to them that fear him. Hallelujah. And I, I misspoke. I said it was a quote of Psalms 34, 7. It's actually Psalms 34, 8. You know, but... You know, I want to put 30, um, 4, 7 and 34, 9 there so that you can see what it was in relation to. You know, it says the angel of Yahuwah and Kappa around them that fear him. You know, and so, you know, um, what's the, the point is those that fear him, he will deliver. And for those that fear him, there is no one. And this is an, this is important to understand. You know, he says, oh, taste and see that Yahoo is good. Blessed is the man that trusted him. You know, all you need to do is trust me out. You want to be blessed? There's a recipe. Trust in Yah. Amen. Yeah. You want to be blessed? Don't fear any L but Yah. That's right. Yeah. What you mean? You don't know what L means? You know, don't fear any judge. Don't fear any strong ruler. But Yah. How's that? 
I don't think you got it. Don't fear any president. Don't fear any judge. Don't fear any authority. But yeah. Okay, I think we got it. First Keith is 2 4. <clears throat> to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of Elohim and pressure. Mm. Coming as unto a living stone. This is the way Yahshua came. He came as a living stone. Stone speaks the truth, and he was the living truth. Amen. Amen. You know, hence he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Or the truth, the way, and the life. Either way, he said it. And that's what he was. Now, I want to focus in on, it said, disallowed indeed of men. This word disallowed is apodokimazo. Apodokimazo number 553, meaning to disapprove, to repudiate, i.e. to reject the validity or authority of. And this is what they did to the living truth. They rejected the, his validity the, uh, of, what, of what was, they rejected the validity of his words and the authority of him to even speak those words. You know, now this is important to understand because in verse five, first keepers, he says, ye also as living stones. Or a lively stone, same word. I don't know why they translated it. lively here and li live, um, living there and lively there. It's the same word. You know, he also, as living stones or lively stones, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to Elohim by Yahushua Mashiach. So, what Apostle um, Peter is teaching us is that if we, in fact, have been born again, by the sincere word of Elohim, that is by the word minus all deceit, because that's what speaks to the sincere. It's got to be pure, you know. So that is the word minus all deceit. Then as newborn babes in Mashiach, we're to be nourished and nurtured with Torah. Everybody with me? Yes. Yeah. All right. Then the apostle Peter goes on to say, if we in fact grow up eating, Torah, or manna, Selah, then we will have tasted and seen that Yah is good, thereby alluding that we will fear Yahuwah only and trust in him to deliver us regardless of the situation or circumstance. Hello, somebody. In verse 4, he teaches that, that Yah came as a living stone or the living truth, but was disapproved i.e. rejected and refused the validity of his statements as well as his authority as king, the which scripture agrees with as well. When we look at Psalms 118, 21 and 22, it says just this. I love this. It says, I will praise thee, for thou hast heard me and art become my salvation. This word salvation is number 3444, and that is Yahshua. So it, it literally says, I will praise thee, for thou hast heard me and art become Yahshua the stone which the builders refused is become the headstone of the corn. Hallelujah. That's good stuff right there. Now, verse 5 teaches that we too are, be, are to become living stones, meaning we too will be rejected or refused concerning the validity of our statements and our authority. How many have been rejected or refused concerning the validity of our statements? You know, if you haven't, then you're not doing something right. Because if they rejected our Messiah, then surely they're going to reject us too. Right. He say, if they, if they hate you, know that they hated me first. Amen? Yeah. You know, so... If they not refusing, if they not refusing you, if they not rejecting the validity of your statements, you know, and your, and your authority in, in Yahshua, then yeah, something wrong, something pretty much wrong. Uh, say la. Now, Apostle Peter goes on to say that we are built up a spiritual, that is a non-kernel house, 
you know, now, now take note that spiritual speaks to being non carnal. Now, remember, when you were carnal, you were a what? A babe. So, Apostle Peter goes on to say, we are built up. So, if we built up, if we don't grew up, we're no longer carnal. Amen? Amen. But we become a part of a spiritual, a non carnal house. So, we become a non carnal house. In, a, in and of ourselves as well as corporate, right? You know, and a holy priesthood to offer spiritual, that is not kind of sacrifices. So this is why we're not going out there slaying no sheep. You know, we're not right. killing bulls and goats. Right. We're not taking a blood and sprinkling it in the box, you know, because we're part of a spiritual non carnal house. And a spiritual non carnal priesthood, you know, made acceptable by Yahushua Mashiach. And yep, this too is found in scripture elsewhere. Yes, Yahoo 8 14. And he shall be for a sanctuary, that is a temple, that is a holy place, amen. But for a stone of stumbling and for a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel, for a gin and a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. So you can see it's saying the exact same thing, that they will be, they, uh, he'll be refused. He'll be rejected. The validity of his statements, you know, as well as his authority will become a stumbling block, you know, for a stumbling um, um, block and a rock of offense for both the houses of Israel, Israel and Yahudah. And so it was, and so it is. You know, and so you, you have to be able to, to um, understand this and see that this has transpired. It is, it's happened and it's still happening. Because, you know, there's many still on the second, right, man? Yeah. Let me have my next reader read uh, First Kephas 2, 6 through 8, please. Wherefore, wherefore also it contained in the scripture, behold, I lay in Sion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner, and the stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient whereunto also they were appointed. Wherefore, hear the word of Yahuwah. Right, that's good. Thank you. All right, so here it is. We see that he says, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect and precious. You know, uh, you know, and to those of us that believe he's precious, you know, but unto the disobedient, you know, he's disallowed. He's rejected his his, the validity of his statements are rejected. His authority as king of Yahuda is, is rejected, is refused. Nevertheless, he's the head of the corner. He's the cornerstone. He's the beginning of the temple made without hands. Amen? Amen. See, some of the Yahuda, they starting to believe now. They just ought to. Because they temple been destroyed, you know, for millennia. Amen. You know, and our temple been being built up for millennia. Amen. You know, so where they have no covering for sin because they have not a temple, they have not an altar, they have no sacrifices to cover their sin. Nevertheless, we have a spiritual house, a spiritual priesthood with spiritual sacrifices to cover our sin. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. You know, and this sounds very much like Yeshayahu 8, 14, but it's actually a quote from Yeshayahu 28, 14 through 16, which says, Wherefore, hear the word of Yahuwah, ye scornful men, that rule this people which is in Jerusalem. Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death. And with hell are we in agreement. When the overflowing scourge have, shall pass through, it shall not consume unto us. For we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. 
Therefore, thus saith the Adonai Yahuwah, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. So the lies that they made their refuge in the falsehood that they hide behind is an allusion to the old covenant and its words. You know, but you have to remember that its words is Torah, i.e. both the written and oral parts of Torah. See, and it's the oral parts of Torah that they thought that they would be saved by. And this is why they exalted the oral um, Torah over the written word of Elohim. But that was a falsehood. That was a bunch of lies. Mm -hmm. You know, and because that's done away with. You know, and so they thought they was going to hide behind that. You know, but it's no longer to protect them now that there's a new temple. You can't protect them now that there's a new priesthood, that there's a new covenant, and there's a new old Torah in effect today, thereby making the old of no effect. And the new oral Torah is Yahshua's commandments, words, and saying. So, say la on that one. Pray that get down in your in your ruach. First Keith was 2 9. <clears throat> but ye are a chosen generation. Hallelujah. A royal priesthood and holy nation. A peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. All right. So I want to deal with some of this terminology here because, you know, it sounds great, doesn't it? But it's not quite what it says, you know. Uh, I think it could it could read a, a little bit better. When we look at this word generation, we find that it's genos, number 1085. It means it speaks to kin or kindred, i.e., family. You know, it's speaking about family. It's saying, but ye are a chosen family. I like family. I think that's a much better interpretation than generation. You know, let's take a look at how this word is used elsewhere. Acts 4, 6 says, And Annas, the high priest, and Caiaphas, and Yochanan, and Alexander, as many as were of the kindred of the high priest, were gathered together at Jerusalem. Is that not talking about family? Mm -hmm. Acts 7, 13. And at the second time, Yosef was made known to his brethren, and Yosef's kindred was made known unto Pharaoh. Surely that was talking about his family, wasn't it? Yeah. Acts 7, um, Acts, I mean, sorry, 2 Corinthians eleven twenty six. 26. In journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by mine own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. His countrymen, this is the same word, you know, is it not talking about his family? It's even contrasted with the heathen who are not his family. Amen? Amen. First Corinthians 12, 28. And Elohim have set some in the church. First, apostles. Secondly, prophets. Thirdly, teachers. After that, miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments. And get this, diversities of tongues. This is actually family tongue. You know, so... What a lot of people like to like to say, you know, called unknown tongue, is actually the family tongue. You know, Ganos speaks to family. Now, a couple mother, a couple of more um, uh, terms I want to look at. Nation, I want to show you about nation. Nation is ethnos. Now, coincidentally. Oh, it's still up there. Coincidentally, a lot of your translations will say, but ye are a chosen race. You know, it's a difference between a race and family. Yeah. Amen? Yeah, right, right. You know, but ethnos, number 1484, does speak to a race. 
but specifically a tribe. You know, and so he's saying, ye are a royal priesthood and holy tribe. You know, a holy tribe, or if you want to say race, a holy race or a holy tribe. Now, also let us consider, it says, you know, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And every time I, I hear about praises, I get excited. Because I'm a praiser. I just love to praise God. You know, I get excited, you know. But this isn't talking about praise. You know, um, it's, 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 not, it's not the conventional word, you know, Greek word for praise. You know, this word praise is, is arete, number 703, and it speaks to manliness. That's essentially what it means, manliness. You know, and it speaks to valor or excellence. You know, um, it occurs three more times <clears throat> in the brick collar shot outside of this one. And every time it's translated as virtue. So why didn't they just translate it as virtue here? Let's take a look at the other three times that it that it occurs in scripture. Let me have my next reader read Philippians 4, 8, 2 Kephas 1, 3, and 1, 5, please. Finally, brethren, whatsoever think what? Okay. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. According as his divine power have given unto us all things that pertain unto life in godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. And besides this, giving all diligence added to your faith, virtue, and to virtue, knowledge. Hallelujah. Okay, so we see here in Philippians 4, they couldn't translate it as praise. And it clearly shows that it don't mean praise because they use praise in the same sentence. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. You know, and here, even by the same author, you know, here, even by the same author, here it is, is you know, it's translated as glory and virtue and, you know, add faith to your virtue and birth and to virtue knowledge, you know, because it, it just wouldn't make sense. Add to your faith praise. Well, I guess it could. And to, to praise knowledge, you know. But it spoke to virtue. It, it literally means manliness, you know. And, you know, you you, you kind of have to have the eyes to see in order to, to, to get the big picture of what what was being painted here, you know. So, um, you know, what I've done is I put the... Uh, you know the definitions into into the passage to see if it read a little bit different it says uh, so first keep us two nine with the uh, definitions you know inserted but ye are a chosen family a royal priesthood hello mother and holy nation hello children and a peculiar people that should show forth the manliness who have called you out of darkness or if you prefer show forth the virtue of him who have called you out of darkness hello father into his marvelous light into his marvelous knowledge wisdom and understanding that's all i have for you today prayer was a blessing